Alright, now let's continue for the following slides whereby this one is for relationship between lamina and tubulum flow with Reynolds number. So, uh, in previous videos, we have in previous uh, slides, so we have, uh, you have uh, known that this is the equation for uh, Reynolds value. Okay, so for Reynolds number, this one, it relates with the liquid flowing, with the fluid flowing. When a fluid flowing in a pipe and it is being observed carefully, it will be seen that the pattern of flow will become more disturbed, okay, if the velocity of the fluid increase, alright. So if the flow of the fluid is fast, then basically we will have a a more disturbed pattern of flow for the fluid flow. Then the Reynolds, it concluded that this instability of flow, the instability of flow, whereby this one related to the disturbance of the flow, could be predicted in the term of the velocity as well as the viscous forces in terms of the viscosity of the fluid which act on the fluid. So the equation for Reynolds number, it is uh, being uh, acknowledged by Reynolds equals to dv rho over mu, whereby d stands for diameter, uh, v is for the uh, velocity, all right, and then rho is the density of the fluid, followed by the viscosity of the fluid. Okay, so for this one, you need to know the value of the Reynolds number. If let's say when you calculate the value of Reynolds number and the value of Reynolds number give you the answer of less than 2100, that means the flow of the fluid is streamlined or lamina flow. Okay? And if let's say you calculated the value of Reynolds and the value of Reynolds is in between 4000 and 2100, then it means that the fluid flow of the liquid is in transition. In transition meaning that at certain area, sometimes it will flow in a lamina flow behavior and at certain area, it will become more disturbed, right? Because this particular Reynolds number, it depends on the velocity as well as the viscosity of the fluid. If you calculated the value of Reynolds number, Okay, when we calculate the value of Reynolds number and the answer is greater than 4000, then we can summarize that the flow of the fluid is considered as turbulent flow, meaning that the velocity is a very fast, so the, disturb, the fluid flow is more disturbed. Okay, so for Reynolds number, it is a mathematical relationship to predict whether the flow is considered as a lamina flow or turbulent flow. So we look at for the example of uh, la uh, lamina flow or turbulent flow. <clears throat> this one you need to identify whether the flow is turbulence or lamina flow. Okay, we have this uh, problem statement: mango juice drink with density of seven hundred kilogram per meter cubic. Okay, density. This one is being denoted as a rho. And viscosity of 1.8 times by 10 to the power of 2 pascal second. This one is being denoted as mu. Flows in the stainless steel tube with the inner diameter of 2 cm. This one D. However, look at this particular unit. It is in centimeter. Alright, so when you have several units in the uh, problem statement, okay, so make sure that you convert the unit to become one consistent unit system. So for this particular centimeter, immediately when you look at this particular unit, convert from centimeter to become meter. So it will be easier for you to plug in the values and put into the equation that has been given. How do you ensure that the flow is turbulent? Okay, so how do we want to know whether the fluid flow is turbulent or streamlined? Again, we need to use the equation of Reynolds number equals to dv rho over mu. So d, the diameter of the pipe is 2 cm, then we convert to meter, it becomes 0.02 meter. 
Then for the density of fluid, this one is known as a rho. It is 700 kilometer per cubic. Alright, and then in terms of velocity, it is unknown. Velocity of the fluid flow is unknown. Okay, so how, what do we want to calculate is the velocity. This one is the unknown. <clears throat> and then the mu viscosity of the fluid is 1.8 times by 10 to the power of negative 2 pascal second. So, if let's say the, uh, the question already asks you whether the flow is turbulent, then we know that the range of turbulence flow is for the Reynolds number to become greater or more than 4000. If the question asks you, if let's say the flow is turbulence, then it is known that the Reynolds number is less than 2100. So now, since the question already stated that how do we want to ensure the flow is turbulent, then we take the value of Reynolds as 4000 because this one is for turbulence flow. Okay? So the value of Reynolds, this one again, we have the equation Reynolds equals to dv rho over mu. Then this particular Reynolds, so you replace, immediately replace with the value of 4000. So 4000 equals to dv rho over mu. Right? So then we have the value for the diameter, we have the value for the density and then followed by the viscosity. However, the viscosity is unknown. Okay, but then the value for our Reynolds number is already being replaced with 4000. Now, how do we calculate the value of velocity? Is by shifting the V to the other side and then calculate all the values and you should be able to get the value for the velocity. Okay, when you get the value for velocity, this answer is a 1.4 meter per second. This one indicates that the flow of the fluid is a very high velocity. Okay, how do we know that? This one I have mentioned before. If let's say the V, the velocity is uh, less than 1 meter per second, okay, 1 meter per second, then this one is streamlined, streamlined or laminar flow. However, if let's say the velocity is greater than 1 meter per second, then this one we will indicate that this one is turbulent flow. Okay, because the speed, the velocity of the flow is a very fast. So when it is a more than 1 meter per second, then uh, the flow of the fluid is become more disturbed. So that's why it is being categorized as turbulent flow if the velocity is greater than 1 meter per second. So now, um, this one you need to prove, okay, for this particular problem statement, actually you need to prove whether the flow is turbulent or not. So how do we ensure that the flow is turbulent? How do you want to prove is by calculating the velocity. So when we calculate the value of velocity is 5.1 meter per second, meaning that it's, it's, it, the velocity is already greater than 1 meter per second, then this one is indicated the flow of the fluid is turbulent, okay. So this is the first example, all right. So now this one is the uh, um, in graphic of how the flow of the fluid works. So when we have lamina flow over here, basically we have only one maximum velocity, okay. This particular, this one V2 is considered as maximum velocity. However, for V1, for the other velocity, this one basically are lower compared to V2. So, the flow of the fluid is basically uh, meant for laminar flow when we have only one uh, maximum velocity. However, when we talk about turbulent flow, for turbulence flow, we have several maximum velocities as in contrast with laminar flow. Okay, so um, because it is a more disturbed, so that's why we have a more uh, maximum velocity compared to laminar flow. So when we have a more than one of maximum velocity, then the uh, flow of the fluid become more disturbed compared to laminar flow. Okay, so this is the graphic uh, of how the flow of the fluid works in tubing. 
this one we known as uh, tubing or if let's say you look at the uh, waterfall waterfall is uh, meant for turbulence flow because it has several maximum velocity compared to the uh, lamina flow all right now we move on for the next example for this particular example you need to calculate the value <clears throat> okay for example two Milk is a flowing at 0.12 meter cubic per minute. Okay, can you see that this one, the value for velocity is being indicated as per minute. So normally the velocity is being uh, represented with the unit of the uh, meter per second. But this one, the volumetric rate, okay, this is uh, what we've known as a volumetric rate, okay, this one. volumetric rate okay why it is known as volumetric rate because we have this meter cubic okay this one is meant for the volume all right when we have per minute then of course it will reflect to the rate of the flow for the fluid so basically for si unit for the time or for the rate it is always being used the unit of per second but this one is using per minute. This one is to trick you. This particular unit is uh, to serve to trick you. So you need to be aware of this particular unit. Okay, it is a flowing in a 2.5 centimeter diameter pipe. Again, this one is a 2.5 centimeter of diameter. So again, the unit, you need to focus on the unit as well uh, together with the problem statement. If the temperature of the milk is 21 degrees Celsius, okay, this one, this particular temperature value is just to let you know because at 21 degrees Celsius, um, there are a set of physical properties for the milk that need to be referred to at 21 degrees Celsius because uh, different uh, temperature will give different uh, physical properties for the milk. So, is the flow turbulent or streamlined? Okay, is the flow turbulent or streamlined? So, what you supposed to do when the question asks you if the flow is turbulent or streamlined, this one, obviously, you need to calculate for the value of velocity. For, uh, sorry, for the Reynolds number. Because uh, there is a range of Reynolds value that indicates whether the value is uh, turbulent, whether the fluid flow is turbulent or streamlined. Okay, so this particular uh, information in terms of the viscosity, in terms of the density will be given to you. And again, this one, this particular viscosity and density, this one is the physical properties for the milk. And can you see that the value given is at 21 degrees Celsius? Alright, so this particular temperature is just a matter of reference for the physical properties of this particular uh, milk. Okay, so for uh, viscosity, for the density has been given, the viscosity is 2.1 centipoise or it can be uh, regarded as 2.1 times by 10 to the power of negative 3 pascal second and the density is 1029 kilogram per meter cubic. Whereby the diameter pipe, this one is 2.5 centimeter, so it is being converted to meter and it becomes 0.025 meter. Okay, so how do we want to answer this question? So what you need to do is you need to calculate first the cross-sectional area of the pipe. Okay, cross-sectional area of the pipe, you can use the equation of pi over 4 times by d square. Okay. And plug in the values of d square is 0.025. Okay, and you should be able to get the answer over here as 4.9 times by 10 to the power of negative 4 meter square. Okay, so this is the unit of the area. Okay, so uh, for this particular um, problem solution you need to focus on the unit because this particular unit will give you the final answer, will give you the correct final answer. Okay, and then it is given that volumetric flow rate, 
V is 0.12 meter cubic per minute. So it is best for you to convert from 0.12 meter cubic per minute to become the unit become meter cubic per second. All right. So that it will ease you to calculate for the value of uh, Reynolds number later. Okay. And then you need to calculate for the velocity of flow. Okay, how to calculate for the velocity of flow is by uh, by using um, V over A. This one, V is a volumetric flow rate. A is the area. So what you need to do is that this one, 0 0.12 per 60. Okay, why 60? This one because we want to convert uh, this particular 60 is because we want to convert from minute to second. Okay, times by the area. Okay, the area we have calculated over here. Okay, 1 over 4.9 times by 10 to the power of negative 4. Okay, why it is 1 over 4.9 times 10 to the power of 4? Because the volumetric flow rate is per... Uh, uh, per area, okay, this one is the area, alright, this is the area, okay. Okay, so you should be able to get the value as 4.1 meter per second, okay. Uh, the unit will be cancelled out because this particular unit is a meter cubic, this one is second, okay, and this particular area, the unit is meter square, Okay, so this one meter square, you can cancel out, then it only becomes with meter per second. So that's why the unit is meter per second. Okay, now what you need to do is you need to calculate for the value of Reynolds. Alright, so for the value of Reynolds, this one is the D, is the uh, diameter followed by the V, velocity of flow. Okay, and then rho followed by the mu. So, if you plug in all the values together with the units, all the units will be cancelled out here for this particular Reynolds number because the Reynolds number is dimensionless, meaning they, they, they don't have any value. So, insert all the values. This one, the uh, diameter is 0 0.025 meter and then the volumetric, uh, the velocity of flow is 4.1 times by the density has been given is 1029 kilogram per meter cubic. Okay, per with the uh, viscosity, it is 2.1 times by 10 to the power of 3. So your answer, your final answer will be around 50,230. Okay, 50,000. So, from the range of Reynolds, if let's say it is turbulent, for a turbulent flow, Reynolds number is supposed to be greater than 4,000. Alright? So, this particular value, 50,000, is greater than 4,000. So, you need to conclude that this particular flow, hence, this flow is turbulent. Because the Reynolds value is greater than 4,000. Okay, this particular answer. You need to uh, let the reader or let the checker know whether this particular Reynolds value is streamlined or turbulent. Okay, based on the value that you have calculated, the value of the Reynolds number. Alright, now let's move on to the continuity equation for fluid dynamics. In most processes, a fluid has to be moved so that the study of fluid in motion is important. Problems on the flow of fluids are solved by applying the principles of conservation of mass and energy. The motion of fluids can be described by writing appropriate mass and energy balance. So again, for the flow, uh, fluid flow, you need to have a basic uh, knowledge on mass and energy balance. So that's why it is important for you to uh, master up for the initial chapters of this particular subject. 
Okay, fluid flow, uh, whereby this one is uh, related with the mass balance. Flow system of a continuous pipe, which changes its diameter passing into and out of a unit of processing plant, for example, pasteurizing heat exchanger. Pump is being used to provide the energy to move the fluid. So basically, when uh, in food industry, uh, there will be a requirement to use pump in order for them to move the fluid from one area to another area. Alright, so this schematic diagram, it shows how the fluid is being uh, flow. So this one is section 1 and this particular fluid is going to be moved to section 2. Alright, so for section 1, we have its own pressure, its own area, size of uh, and as well as the diameter of the pipe and the velocity as well as the density of the fluid is according to this area. Alright, and then this pump will require to move the fluid to another higher level and followed by the processing of the fluid and it will be uh, eluted, it will be exit at this uh, section 2 and at this section it has its own diameter its own set of uh, tubing diameter together with the area the velocity density as well as the pressure can you see that this one this pressure one is at the lower altitude and for this pressure two, this one has higher altitude so of course it will have its own different pressure okay so v1 and v2 this one indicated for the velocity um, for row 1, row 2, this one involving for the density of the fluid and then we have the area for section 1 and section 2 followed by the diameter of the piping at section 1 as well as section 2. So application of law of conservation of uh, mass can obtain a mass balance Assume the system, okay, by assuming that the system is working steadily, meaning that it is uh, uh, without any friction or any accumulation of fluid, there is a no accumulation, okay, no accumulation of fluid in any part of the system. And then the quantity of fluid, okay, the quantity of fluid at inlet uh, for section 1 must come out at section 2 because this one for uh, mass uh, balance, we have uh, learned that for the inlet, for the mass at the inlet, it should be at inlet 1, it should be equivalent with the mass at section 2. So the mass balance of a fluid flow can be expressed as rho 1 A1 V1 equals to rho 2 A2 V2. And since the fluid is incompressible, if let's say we are transporting water, for example, then for water, the fluid is incompressible. Unless if let's say we are talking about gas, then gas, it is compressible, then of course you need to consider for the uh, pressure as well as the density. Okay, so since the fluid is incompressible, then this particular density should be at the equal value. Okay, this particular density will be at equal value. So for uh, this particular equation, this equation 1 can be simplified when we cancel out this uh, row 1 and row 2 and it becomes A1V1 equals to A2V2. And this particular equation is known as continuity equation for liquids. Okay, for this particular continuity equation, this continuity equation basically are being used to solve uh, fluid flow problems and it also can be used in solving many cases of gas flow in which, in which the changes of pressure is a very small. Okay, there is a no or um, insignificant changes of the pressure. Alright, then uh, we have Bernoulli equation because this particular Bernoulli equation it is also associated with fluid flow. So the total energy just now it is uh, in previous slide just now is uh, for the mass balance. For Bernoulli equation, this one is meant for uh, energy balance, for fluid flow. The total energy of 1 kg of fluid entering at section 1 must be equal with the total energy at, of 1 kg of fluid enter, uh, leaving at section 2. Okay, so the energy enter at section 1 is equivalent with, with energy leaving at section 2. 
less the energy added by the pump plus a friction energy loss in the travelling between the two sections. Alright, so of course when we um, when the fluid is being flowed, so of course there will be some friction uh, occur during the transportation of the fluid. So using the subscript 1 and 2 to denote condition at section 1 and section 2 respectively, then we can write for the energy balance. Okay, energy balance for the fluid flow. Alright, so this one is EP1 plus uh, EK1 plus ER1 equals to EP1, uh, sorry, this one supposed to be EP2 plus EK2 plus ER2, okay, plus EF minus by EC. So, um, this particular EP1, this one is potential energy. Potential energy. Okay, so potential energy is being using the equation of Z1G. Z is the depth of the fluid. G is the gravitational acceleration. EK1, this one is kinetic energy. Kinetic energy. Okay, it is a being the equation to uh, represent kinetic energy is V1 square over 2. V is the velocity. ER1. This one is a pressure energy. Pressure energy. Okay. And this equation is being represented by P1 over rho 1. Okay. And then for section 2, this one is meant for section 2. So, please make some uh, correction in your lecture notes. This one supposed to be EP2. Energy potential for section 2 is Z2G. And uh, kinetic energy for section 2 is a V2 square over 2. Plus with ER2, this one is being represented by P2 over rho 2 plus by EF minus by EC. EF, this one is a friction loss okay, due to the tubing. And then this particular EC, this one is the mechanical energy. Okay, so in special case where, for example, we assume that this particular system is working steadily, meaning that there is a no mechanical energy involved and for a frictionless fluid, meaning that the system is a very good, there is a no friction, then we can expect that this particular EC and EF is equal to zero. So you can cancel out this one. And simplify the equation to become Z1G, this one is the potential energy, plus with kinetic energy, V1 square, plus P1 over rho 1, this one is the uh, pressure energy, equals to Z2G plus V2 square over 2 plus P2 over rho 2. So since this is true for any section of the pipe, then the equation can be written as Z1G plus V square over 2 plus P over rho equals to K, whereby K is constant. And this particular equation is Bernoulli equation. Okay. So again, this one is the same schematic diagram. Uh, this one is showing you how the... Uh, Bernoulli equation is being used for transportation of the fluid okay, whereby we have this kinetic energy, we have the pressure energy as well as a potential energy at section 1 as well as at section 2 when um, the fluid is being transported from one area, one section to another section. Alright, so we have this particular uh, problem statement Whole milk is a flowing into a centrifuge through a full 5 cm diameter pipe at a velocity of 0.22 m per second. This milk is separated to skim milk and cream with specific gravity of 1.04 and 1.1 respectively. Okay, 1.04, this one is meant for the skim milk. Okay, this one is meant for skim milk. Alright, and this 1.01 is meant for the cream. Okay, calculate the flow velocities of skim milk. Flow velocities meaning that you need to calculate for the velocities. This is what you need to do. 
of skim milk and cream meaning that you have a V for skim milk and you need to calculate V for the cream okay if they are discharged through 2 cm diameter pipes okay this is the diameter the specific gravity of whole milk is 1.035 uh, of the value for the milk okay so this picture it shows uh, for the separation of milk and cream when we have whole milk okay um, sometimes you will see that there is a, a product that is being labeled as skim milk some product is being labeled as heavy cream so this is the centrifuge that responsible to separate the uh, milk to become skim milk and cream all right so how do we solve this problem is by applying the equation of Bernoulli equation okay so how do we solve this problem is by applying for Bernoulli equation and first what you need to do is you need to identify how many liquids are present in this particular system okay liquids present okay one we have whole milk okay two we have skim milk and then third one we have cream so you need to know what are the liquids that present in this particular process so that when you want to write the equation for Bernoulli equation it will be easier for you to write down the equation okay so now you need to write the equation for Bernoulli equation this one is a row 1 a1 b1 equals to row 2 a2 v2 plus row 3 a3 b3 okay this particular one this one is meant for whole milk okay wm i denote as whole milk row 2 a2 okay why one side is whole milk because whole milk is at this particular this particular whole milk okay is here inside this container Right, whereby this particular skim milk, this one is for skim milk and this one is for the cream. Okay, skim milk basically over here and then for the cream is over here. So the result of separation for whole milk, you will get skim milk and you will get cream. Okay, the separation of whole milk, you will get skim milk. This one is skim milk and you will get cream. Alright, so that's why uh, one side on your left hand side this one is only meant for whole milk and on your right hand side we have two resultant of liquid which is which are skim milk as well as the cream okay so you need to write first the Bernoulli equation whereby row 1 a1 b1 equals to row 2 a2 v2 plus row 3 a3 v3 um, this is the resultant of separation of whole milk okay so since liquid is incompressible so we can uh, remove this particular density the changes of density for the uh, milk then you can simplify the equation by uh, rearranging the equation as a1 v1 equals to a2 v2 plus a3 v3 okay so this one is the first equation and this one is the second equation all right so um, the second equation is to simplify the equation of number one however we still need to use the equation number one so how do we uh, simplify how do we use these two equation is by solving sim simultaneously by using simultaneous equation okay so what you need to do is you need to substitute for example, I substitute a V2 in mass balance. Okay, from this equation number 2, for example, I want to, want, uh, because this is the unknown, V2 and V3 is the unknown. So, for example, I want to get the value for V2, then I rearrange the equation from equation 2, then V2 becomes as A1, V1 minus by 
A3 V3 divide by divide by A2. Okay, so this one is the third equation. So we have three equations that you need to use in order for you to solve this particular problem. Okay, so now what you need to do is, okay, for these first few steps, what you need to do is you need to apply all the equations and rearrange the equation. Then only after that you are going to put in the values that has been given in the problem statement. So for the initial part, do not use any values, do not um, replace any values into the equation yet. So what you need to do is, uh, for the from equation number um, two or equation number one, okay, what you need to do is you need to substitute, substitute V2, the value for V2 in mass balance, So what you need to do is you need to calculate for uh, again from the equation number one just now in mass balance equation one. So this one has become row one a one v one equals to row two a two and then this particular v two is coming from v three. This v two you need to put in into the equation as A1, V1, minus by A3, V3, divide by A2, okay? So, plus with row 3, A3, V3, okay? So, rearrange the equation, alright? You should be able to get as A1, V1, equals, uh, sorry, A1, V1, uh, times by row 1 minus by row 2, Okay? equals to A3 V3 times by row 3 minus by row 2. Okay, for this particular part, you need to rearrange yourself, rearrange the equation so that you will get um, this particular equation, like this equation. Okay, this one equation number 4. So basically, you have 1, 2, 3, 4 equation. And after you have uh, four equations, then only from there, you can start to calculate the value of the velocity for the whole milk, uh, for the uh, skim milk as well as for the cream. Alright, now what you need to do is you need to calculate for the area, area of the diameter. This one has been given, the diameter. So what you need to do is you need to calculate for the area. For the area, A1. It is uh, equals to uh, use the equation of pi over 4 times by 0 0.05 square. So you should be able to get as the value of 1.96 times by 10 to the power of negative 3 meter square. Okay, this particular A1 is meant for this particular part. Okay, this particular A1. And this particular part for the whole milk, uh, sorry, for the skim milk and for the cream, it is uh, being leaving the system by having the same diameter size. Okay, can you see that this particular part, this one on the top part, this one is having similar diameter with the bottom from the top and the bottom. For skim milk, this one skim milk and the bottom is cream. Okay, they are having the same diameter. So for A2, a2 equals to A3. The area of A2 is equivalent to A3. So, soft, um, calculate for this particular value by using the same equation, pi over 4 times by the diameter is uh, 0 0.02. Okay, this one has been given to you, 0 0.02 meter square. So, you should be able to get the value as 3.14 times by 10 to the power of negative 4 meter uh, square. Okay, this one meter square. Alright, then uh, the velocity has been given. The velocity for uh, whole mark, V1. V1 is 0 0.22 meter per second. 
Alright, and then the density, you can calculate the density because it has been given the value for specific gravity of whole mark. Remember that you have calculate, uh, you, um, in order for you to calculate for the SG, SG equals to density of a substance, uh, divided by density of reference. Okay, so in order for you to calculate for the uh, density 